everybody to our energy tips for week number seven that is for the 9th till the 15th of February 2019. I hope you guys already watched the theory energy update here in uh, the empath weekly. I gave a whole roundup on dependencies and especially codependency and I want to dive a little deeper with you guys into what this all entails and let's look at how you know that you are a codependent you know that you are a codependent when you constantly feel you have to fix something either yourself or a situation when you constantly feel you have to compensate for something you're codependent when you believe that you're never enough you're codependent when you believe that you're not lovable or that you're not worthy. Not worthy to be loved the way you are. That you have to be different. That you have to either you know, act differently or be differently. You're codependent when you, can, when you feel like you can never rest. And you constantly feel you have to try harder and harder. You know, excessively in, into like everything has to be perfect. I have to be perfect. You're codependent when you don't feel, when you're afraid of your own feelings, when you're afraid of your own emotions, when you don't self-care. That's a big red flag, by the way, you know, um, in, in uh, uh, sort of detecting codependency in you. When, you know, when you go through a little bit of a low time and you stop caring for yourself, for your kids, for your pets, for your plants, you know, when you really... Dismiss your own needs. And this combination of not feeling and, and being afraid of your own feelings um, and uh, therefore not being able to feel your needs, okay, is what, what's responsible for this. So you cannot, you know, d dismiss your inner feeling and, and being, al being afraid of being with your inner feelings without also neglecting your needs. And so a lot of codependents, guys, don't even know what, they're need, what they need. They've never even asked themselves what they truly need. Okay? You're a codependent when you don't enjoy, when you, have, when you really feel that life is like, we, we don't see any sense in living. You're a codependent when you constantly question yourself and your own reality. And I know some of what I talk about plays into this because, you know, I'm talking about perception and ego and how blind spots and how this can trick you into seeing things, you know, in a certain way. And of course, then we also have collective deception and all that. But constantly questioning yourself is different. That's different. That's literally when you don't know who you are. You know, when you just constantly look on the outside, what do others say? What do, you know, what do others do? You know, what do I have to do to comply with what they expect from me? You know, and dismiss your own reality. This is also where this skewed sense of normal happens to us, okay? We are so acceptant of, uh, you know, dysfunctionalities because we never really ask ourselves if this is okay for us, if we even want to live with this. Okay, that our ego kind of tricks us into believing just because we've always done it this way or just because it's familiar, it's safe. And, you know, codependents have this like really, really extremely high threshold for pain and thinking that it's normal to feel all this pain all the time. And that's why it's so difficult to see when things are toxic because there's not even a red flag that comes up in us. Okay. I'm a codependent when I always feel like it's my fault. It's something in me when I'm to blame. Or this is the sort of the slightly more narcissistic version is when I blame everything onto others, onto the collective, onto whatever. Kids, circumstances, not having money. I'm a codependent when I can only love myself when I feel loved by you. I'm a codependent when I can only feel alive and complete with you or through you. And this could be replaced with money or work as well. Or drugs, for that matter. 
I'm a codependent and I'm afraid of being alone with myself. And I avoid this like the plague. Constantly distract myself. Other people's drama. Yeah, here. Oh, do you need help? Oh, yeah, yeah, let me help you. Or, you know, news or whatever. Because I'm afraid to be alone with myself. I'm afraid of loneliness. I'm a codependent when I do not self-love. That's the core of it. And this is what all this talk, you know, in these energy updates and energy tips is ultimately about. It's all about that. The overall energies that we are dealing with here for this next week have a lot to do with code breaking, with, you know, like game changing. Okay, there's going to be some big insights here or not. That depends on how you contextualize things. So, so let's look a little deeper into, you know, what dependencies are, what externalization is, and how this processes within ourselves, you know, in this physical, emotional, mental manner, and what we can do energetically, spiritually, to contextualize this a little better so that we don't, you know, uh, become subject to all the rage and all this explosiveness that comes in here with this next week. All right, let's look at the choices that we make and what we are aligning ourselves to whenever we respond in a certain way. Okay, and also, you know, this, this whole question of what is normal? You know, is this normal? You know, is this okay, you know, that, that I'm being treated this way? Or is this okay how I'm treating somebody else? So toxicity is a big subject here for this next week. And with it, always boundaries. So many of you are dealing with the problem of, you know, uh, sort of spiritually contextualizing boundaries. You feel bad if you have to tell somebody that you don't want to be with them or that they can't do something to you. Guys, the difference between controlling somebody and setting healthy boundaries is in this simple sentence, you don't get to do this to me. You don't get to do this in my space. Controlling is you don't get to do this, you don't get to think this way, but you don't get to say this or you don't get to do this to me. It's, how, it's a healthy boundary, okay? Just sort of as a, as a benchmark here for you, okay? But in order to get through, you know, these, these, these different aspects that come in, you know, I mentioned them already, the pain body and so forth, uh, it really requires us to challenge the ego a bit. And those of you, congratulations, by the way, who went through the detox with us here last week, uh, had a, a very interesting experience. Many of you reported back that, and, and you can join the detox, by the way, at any time. So it's live there uh, in the forum for you, and you can just chime in. It doesn't matter when you started, when you ended. But most of you reported that, Probably the, the most surprising thing was that somehow through challenging your ego and only eating liquid foods, basically, we weren't restricting the calorie intake or anything, just the quality and, and uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, refraining from our, our comfort foods, right? Those of you who had this insight, you realized that all of a sudden your perception shifted as you challenged your ego in this way and this is the reason why I keep you know in coaching sessions or in these energy tips you know keep motivating you you know to not fall for your beliefs for your mindsets for your rigid stuff to be flexible you don't always have to have the answer you know experiment try something new and see how it feels like for you don't be afraid of making mistakes Okay, maturity sets in through allowing yourself or giving yourself the space of eliminating what does not work for you. This is profound, guys. The other thing, you know, that, that will come up here big time for us is this, this uh, getting versus needing. Okay, this has to do with our relationships. It has to do with relating to others. Okay, so there's a part in us that wants something, you know, and... Uh, the, the more we feel like we're not getting it, the more we're trying to get it, the more we're also trying to manipulate the other maybe to get it to us. But uh, the part that we often forget to do is to ask ourselves, do I really need this? 
Okay, so this is uh, sort of the deeper aspect of, of what we're going to talk about here. And for those of you who really want to take advantage of this ongoing increased manifestation power, okay, my tip for you is to really go and feel into your vision. You know, stop thinking so much about it. Stop visualizing it. Go in there with your feeling. Do not be afraid to feel. And when you do this, you probably go, you're probably going to experience something like a fear or something that is holding you back, like a resistance. Oh, what if? What if this doesn't work? You know, this is what you need to pay attention to. Okay, because this is the pathway to your true heart's desire, to your true needs. You know, we often get caught in these, in these ideals, in these, in these fantasies, and forget to ask ourselves if this is actually what we truly want. Do we, are we actually really willing to live with this for the rest of our lives? Because that's what a vision is of yourself, right? That's what a goal is. You, you want to manifest something that you will want to really live for the rest of your life. And you want to love everything about this. You want to love yourself while you're doing it. And you want to love everything that you do. Remember that. Okay, so the chakras involved here next week that are going to be tickled, that are going to be, you know, affected here this next week is our fifth and our seventh together. This is a shift. You'll perceive that as a shift. This has to do with you understanding the larger picture, the larger picture of your own reactions, of your own fantasies, of your own disappointments. Then we're continually uh, dealing with uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of desire, you know, this ego desire moving into our sixth chakra. So it's the second chakra where all the pleasure and our emotions and the fear, you know, of our emotions, it, 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 it goes into tension with our inner vision, with our, you know, pineal gland, with our third eye, you know. And this is why we had to deal with all these fantasies and all these dreams and the illusions sort of falling apart okay we have this conflict that that's con that's going to continue here for this next week but really what this is about is is learning about our ego getting to know our ego getting to know what we're truly up against here and then the third aspect that is coming in is where our second chakra really needs to move into our fourth chakra it needs to break through this barrier you know of ego versus true self or false self versus true self if you will all right so that will manifest in ways where we will question you know all these things that we have been running for that have been driving us all along so it's like moving into our true heart's desire not pleasure or avoiding pain those are the paradigms of your ego now, collectively, I've already mentioned this in the energy update, this will play out with lots of stuff going on here, okay? I'm expecting a lot of news, a lot of surprise elements, maybe unrest, you know, this rage energy, okay? You know what this can do to people, all right? If, if you're in customer service or if you work with people, you know what that's like. And, and some of that is triggered by uh, people feeling really empty right now because they're not really believing in this old system anymore but there's nothing new there to orient yourself on and so you know it feels a bit like overwhelming that there's nothing new there okay and so people tend to lash out there's also a big tendency for accidents this next week so finding the balance uh, you know between your needs and your wants you know will help you to to get through this this electricity that is there and you've heard me say this before, the ego is very much like electricity, you know, it creates these charges in us, all right, this is almost measurable, okay, uh, shit magnets as I also like to call them, okay, so whenever things go extreme, whenever you go into this all or nothing, you know, or oh my god, you know, I'm going to die, or oh my god, this is so dramatic, all right, then you know that you're in, in this electricity field. Physically, um, the pain body is going to be activated, which means that all your old stuff, you know, your teeth may hurt, your bones may hurt, your, your, your knees may hurt, your hips may hurt. Um, this is the, the, the stuff that's coming in, you know, uh, sort of as unresolved, as combination of this, this unresolved inner child and karmic stuff. 
all right now we, we probably you probably you know used to this right now but this is going to flare up a bit and it's also going to um, uh, trigger your addictions you know all your coping patterns so uh, the big thing here that I'm seeing energetically that we need to take care of physically is our nervous system okay and uh, the the vagus nerve, you know, which is uh, sort of linked to our parasympathetic nervous system, you know, that the the part in us that can relax us, you know, that can, you know, sort of uh, release all these 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 calm and soft and gentleness and connectedness neurotransmitters. Okay, that's something you may want to educate yourself about. You know, look this up. I have written articles about this in the blog if you want to. Uh, they affect, or, or the, the vagus nerve and, you know, this, this uh, sort of uh, connectedness that goes, weaves through our physical, you know, affect our um, inner organs, you know, like the liver, the gallbladder, your kidneys, okay, and also uh, still your, your stomach and your spleen a bit, okay. These are all things related to how you work with your emotions, how you process them, and how you release them. That's why um, I motivated you guys to do the detox last week, because when you're in a, in a more detoxed state, all right, um, it's not so overwhelming when these things come in, all right. Um, <clears throat> the basic question here for next week on the physical level is, is this good for me? You know, is this really good for me? And um, do I really need this? Okay, so elimination. Emotionally, guys, this rage, this anger, hatred, resentment, uh, you know, uh, understand that when you experience yourself in that way, and I'm the first one to say, you know, you got to find healthy expressions for your anger, but when you experience yourself in that way, it often triggers a guilt cycle, all right? And those of us who have the tendency to be no, um, codependent, you know, it, it will really, you know, uh, push us into this place where... Uh, you know, we don't understand ourselves anymore and where we, uh, you know, even maybe despise ourselves. This is this is very toxic, guys. You got to be careful with this, all right? Accept that you can be rageful too. Accept that you have anger too, okay? And, um, you know, if you lash out uh, in those moments and you hurt somebody, then you need to apologize, you need to make good, you need to make amends, all right? But sometimes, you know, that's the best way to to move into the next harmonic of something, you know, to move into this next level, to move into the next orbit. Another tip that I gave you in the energy tips already is to not get too fixated on, on what you're not getting, okay? Don't fixate on what you're not having or getting, especially not from the other, because that clouds your perception, okay? Focus on what you truly want instead. And if you're already working on what you truly want, then um, add a sort of the next orbit, the next layer to this, and this would be, how do I want this? Do I really want this in this way? Okay. Now, <clears throat> mentally, this can be a, a tricky week because you may actually feel you in control, okay? And then you will experience these, like, really sudden disappointments, shockers, almost okay so be prepared for this this is the nature of this next week okay and you will feel like oh my god and after all this work that I've done and you know as after all that I've invested in this after all that we've gone through you know this isn't working and you may realize how much there still is to work through you know to get to a place of you know that you can truly love yourself that you can truly be one, you know, with, with how you experience yourself. And you will feel a tendency to blame the other. You'll feel a tendency to blame the system, you know, to go on a, to become a rage beast, you know, about um, your president or, uh, you know, your employer or whatever, okay? You, you need to stop that, okay? Because it's really not about that. You know, you are in this situation because you allowed this, Okay, and uh, whether you did this consciously or, or not consciously, it doesn't matter. Okay, when you detect toxicity in your life, okay, or when you de detect um, sort of uh, sort of severe deception, be it your own deception or that of others. Okay, the only thing that you can do in this moment is to ask yourself, 
how can I move out of this? That's the first step. And then ask yourself, what in the world pulled me into this? What is underneath that? What have I possibly gotten out of that? Okay. It may not be you consciously getting something out of it, but your ego did. And that's why you agreed to it. That's, that's how these, these unconscious and these toxic patterns, you know, with ourselves and others occur. That we unconsciously agree to something because there's some part of us that is getting something out of it. And when it comes to communicating, you know, with others, these kind of things, my general tip for next week is listen more and talk less. Yes, that would be interesting for me. <laughs> Socially, in your relationships, but also at work, you know, um, look at what the feedback is here. What is the other person actually, um, you know, mirroring to you, okay? And, and what rubs you the wrong way about this? You know, do you feel like you're not getting enough appreciation or approval or whatever? Then uh, you need to ask yourself, you know, why am I even expecting this from this person? Even if it is your, your romantic partner, your husband or your children. Okay. Life is not about getting approval. Sure, we all have a need, you know, to feel needed, to feel validated somehow. But it, this has to come from within yourself. And if everybody goes through this, this rage beast state, you know, this, this code breaker state, this overwhelmed, you know, with themselves, don't expect that from others. They, they are way too much wrapped up with themselves. So everybody's going to be wrapped up with themselves. So... Keep an eye on your projections, you know, and make sure that you have proper boundaries. So boundary work here is the key word for these next weeks. You need to follow up on your red flags. If you're already feeling that this is not okay, why are you still there? Why are you still allowing this? What are you getting out of this? Okay. And if you're not sure, you know, if, if this goes too far, or if this is normal or functional or not, you know, then you need to express that. You need to say, you know, this, this doesn't make me feel good. You know, this makes me feel like, um, you know, so-and-so, or you want me to be different from who I am. You know, guess what? You know, this is who I am. Yes, I have a lot of flaws. I have a lot of things that I still need to work on. You know, I, I, I'm not perfect. But this is who I am. Can you love who I am regardless? And that, of course, then immediately also reflects this back to you. Can you love who you are regardless? But violations of your integrity, of your values, and of your boundaries is not acceptable at no times. So you're going to have to learn how to say, you can do whatever you want to, but not to me. You know, you can, you know, if, if this is okay for you, fine. But that's not okay for me. I'm not going to live with this. If we want to make this work out together, and this is a key word here for you, okay, to look for how to make this work out together. Don't sit there like a pouty kid and say, oh, this isn't working, oh, this isn't working. No. Go into like, okay, what can I do to make this work? beneficial or advantageous for both of us where's the win-win here how can we do this together and with relationships you know the best thing to approach this here for this next week is probably to go into recommitting to what you truly want from your relationship where you want it to move to where you want to be in like 10 years or 20 years okay and make sure that you're both in the same boat and then you know express your concerns openly and ask the other person, are you willing to commit to this? I am willing to commit to this. I want this. Are you willing to commit to this as well? Are you willing to do what it takes to work this out together? You don't have to have the fix. I don't have to have the fix. We don't have to be perfect. But are we generally willing to work this out together, to find resolutions together? That is the higher harmonics of connectedness, the next level of connectedness, guys. Not trying harder, trying to become more perfect, trying to push harder or, you know, try to get the most out of it. No. How can we make this work for both of us? 
spiritually, you know, it's uh, it's really about uh, uh, recognizing, you know, what this energetic sensitivity that you have, and and also the empathy, you know, uh, what power that is, huge power, and with this power also comes a responsibility. You know, if you're an untrained empath, chances are, you know, ninety percent of your time you're actually consciously or unconsciously somehow manipulating the energy in the room between two, between two people or whatever. You, you're projecting something into this. This is your power. And this is very, very cool. It puts you or, or predestines you for leadership positions, for community work, for healing work, you know, for motivating other people, you know, to see beyond their own limitations. Okay, but it also predestines you for becoming a manipulator for doing these things from behind because other people are not as energetically sensitive as you are right well wait till you have a relationship with another empath for the first time yep there's a whole different level of interaction and that's a very very good lesson so if some of you are in such relationships you know where you are with another energetically sensitive person you got to learn how to speak that lingo, how to speak up and say, hey, dude, you know, this is too much projection for me. You know, you pushing into my energy, you know, and, and work this out together because most of us do this unconsciously. We're not aware that we're doing this. So this responsibility, okay, this should just remind you, you know, that this energies always go both ways, okay? Express, you know, what it is, you know, that, that you need, you know, in this, this process, you know, from others, but also what you need from yourself. Trust in your inner process, okay? The process is an ongoing, it's a lifelong journey, all right? Accept that, okay? And trust that your choice, your alignment to work on it will get you there. Energetically, you need to challenge your perception here to read to break through that, okay? Because just because you're feeling, you know, underloved and underappreciated doesn't mean that this is reality. Because you, this may not even what you need. You may think that this is what you need, but um, from an energetic standpoint, you know, you really need to reclaim your your, your true heart's perspective. You need to reclaim truth, you know, and and accept that you have blind spots. The ego cannot transcend itself, guys. The mind cannot transcend itself. You have to go into the energetic perspective of things, and the energetic perspective comes through connecting with your heart. And for many of us, you know, who are already doing this, it's really just about learning, you know, that we have to let the past be, you know. You can't get pulled into all this guilt and shame from the past about how you were unaware and how you didn't see those things in the past. Now you're seeing them. Now you need to manage your energy so that you don't get into this place again. There's a certain threshold, guys, when you get pulled into a certain energetic state and you know this, these lower vibratory states, you got to act out like you did in the past. That's a program in you, okay? Seek the in-between, guys. Seek that space. And you get this through meditation, through contemplation, through silence, through inner stillness, and through really enjoying being with yourself. Really enjoying to be on your own and not to be afraid of loneliness anymore. Okay. This is it, guys. This concludes the energy tips for this week. I hope uh, you got some of these deeper aspects um, for yourself, uh, you know, prepared or, or presented here in a way that, that you can work with this and don't have to resist, you know, when these things come in, okay? Don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're a bad mom or a bad dad or a bad partner this week, okay? It's, it, it's a week that you're going to have to forgive yourself for, but also you know, look a little deeper. So by going in between, you know, and, and responding rather than reacting, you know, managing your energy better and asking yourself what you are getting out of energizing this, you know, you, you're on a good path there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting Transplants. Bye-bye.